that, hey. And then, uh, cool. Well, hey, let me do an opening little prayer. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is uh, great to see everybody here. Uh, just, uh, just wonderful. I would like to begin, I know in RCI programs, a lot of times we get, begin by reading the gospel either, either from the previous Sunday or the, the next Sunday, and um, seeing that Father Jason has allowed me to do the homily this coming Sunday, I would like to read the gospel from for this coming Sunday. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. 
But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The, uh, the Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of, ju <clears throat> now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, the subject for our CIA program is on prayer and our Blessed Mother, Mary. You know, when you think of prayer, you think of, I think our mindset a lot of times is uh, a formula for prayer. And yet, prayer being open to God, um, reflecting on God, I don't know if there is a formula to that. So there's places in the Bible that says, pray without ceasing. I think uh, I'll find it in here as I go, but uh, it might be 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, uh, verse 16. Uh, you know, you're in a, a grocery store and you reach up and help somebody get something off of a shelf that you can reach but they can't or you carry something for them um you know this is praying this is this is doing good for our neighbor this is the love of neighbor this is what our lord asks for us and so really i guess a definition to prayer would be like praying is the raising of one's mind and heart to God. And then we request good things from God. So we have to be attentive to God. We need to be open. Matthew 6, chapter 6, verses, verse 8, talks about God knowing what we need before we ask him. Um... I always like to refer to Philippians 4.4, 4, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. And right after that verse, 5, 6, and 7 is like, have no anxiety at all. The Lord is near. The Lord is close to us. And it's a comforting feeling. It's a, it's a good feeling that you know that you're close to the Lord. And so we pray that. We, we, we look at that. We think of that. And as we go on tonight, I'm going to talk about maybe forms of prayer, like meditating and, and contemplative and, 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 and vocal, and et cetera. Um, but, but, but things during the day also, like referring back again to pray without ceasing, um, Things during the day, Jesus, I trust in you, uh, from the chaplet, or peace, or Jesus, I love you. Uh, these are all good things. Um, the gestures that we perform daily, that's, uh, 
that's part of that, and that's part of that praying without ceasing. Um, you know, praying or prayer is entering into the mystery of God, when, when, and when we do that, I think that's what I meant earlier about there is no formula to that. And so, um, really from our heart also, soul, spirit, heart, when you ask, you know, maybe where does prayer come from? It comes from your heart. Humility is the foundation of prayer. Why pray? God created us to know, love, and serve him in this life and to be happy with him in eternity. Uh, from the Baltimore Catechism, it holds true forever. And uh, so that's that's our deepest desire is to be with God. And so our heart is made for God. Um, God thirsts so that we may thirst for him. The desire of the one that calls us into existence. Scripture says it is the heart that prays. And so we reflect back on our purpose of life in knowing that, that uh, we are thirsting for God. So we are open to God. Uh, this is, a, this is a, uh, a practice that we experience. Sometimes we don't even know being open to God during the day and all of our life in the things we do. St. Augustine says, You have made us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Um, our relationships were always tested. You know, our nature um, is, um, is flawed. And when you think about it, um, from the sin of Adam and Eve, I guess Eve and then Adam went along um, for original sin entering the world, that's how the devil has a hold uh, it's in um, um, in the Bible, and I will find it before this session is over, where I think it's when the Lord was tempted in the desert and the devil um, brought him out and, and tempted him with the various things. And in and he says in, in one of those sessions that everything has been given to me. That's Satan. And so our Lord stood up and said, don't test me. I am the Lord your God, the only God. I am the only one. And, and every time he tempted him, our Lord rebuked him, and our Lord was stronger and then eventually died for the sins of mankind to reverse that, to reverse the sin that was brought into the world with, with uh, Adam and Eve. So this, uh, this is also a source of prayer, the love that we have. And there's various places in scripture that refer to prayer. Um, um, I just found it, I re referred to it a few minutes ago on 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to, through 18, where it talks about praying without ceasing, and we talked about that. Um, Matthew 26, 40 to 41, where Jesus asked uh, his disciples to pray for one hour. Could you not pray for one hour with me? And... Um, you know, various places in the Psalms and so forth. In the aspects of prayer, like our Lord's Prayer, the Our Father is, um, you know, really meditating on the heart of Jesus' teaching, the Sermon on the Mount, in which he taught so much, but we have to absorb that and we have to uh, uh, live that. And so this is also part of our part of our prayer. Um, Matthew 7, 
Verse 11 talks about asking it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Who, everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. You know, that's another comforting um, uh, prayer that we, that we have. Uh, our, the Our Father and, G, and, and our Lord uh, explained uh, this is how to pray, and he prayed the Our Father and taught the Our Father. But it is recited every time we gather in church, just when Father celebrated Mass just a few minutes ago. You know, the Our Father was said, it is said at every Mass. And... Um, You know, and also, you know, in the Mass where John 6 is covered as far as uh, uh, Jesus saying, this is my body, this is my blood. So the petitions of the Our Father, you know, when you think about it, hallowed be thy name, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name to make things holy, thy kingdom come. Um, the kingdom of God around us and amongst us. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We get that from the Lord. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And I did not bring uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church with me, but a lot of preparation for this talk tonight it came out of that CCC. It's just a wonderful resource. It's a wonderful book that covers all teachings and the morals of the Catholic Church. Uh, the specific uh, Our Father that I'm, that I'm talking about right now comes out of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, chapter 2838. There's two parts of that. And it, it's long. It's from like 20, 2807 to, to 2858, something like that. Lead us not into temptation, decision of the heart, but deliver us from evil. So in other words, to fulfill our Lord's will. Another aspect of prayer is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit that is sent to our hearts who teaches us to recognize God as Father. God's free freedom that he gives us in Christ and in the Catechism of the Catholic Church 2560 is really good and explains that very well. Um, I've always... Uh, Fruits of the Holy Spirit, uh, any kind of thing that I have to know, I memorize, or I try to put an acronym together to remember. And on types of prayer, you can think of that as ACTS, A-C-T-S, A for adoration, where we're adoring God's magnificence. C for when we offend God, we're sorry for, the, and so it's an act of contrition. And T is for thanksgiving for our blessings that we have each day. You know, it's a good habit and it's a good practice when we wake up in the morning to <clears throat> get on our knees and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning, or whatever words you use where you recognize that the Lord is with you and brought you safely through that night. S is a supplication, which is really a petition. So we pray for uh, something, and we pray for the intercession of our Blessed Mother, that she would go to the Lord. So we pray through our Blessed Mother. And, and ask her to intercede for us in our needs, in what we want and what we need. The Holy Spirit uh, intercedes for us. And then on time, you know, depending on your schedule, and it's hard to tell, 
you know, what a different person's schedule is like, but there's morning prayers and there's evening prayers, before meal prayers, and um, there's silent prayer. There's a liturgy of the hours, is um, the office, it's called the office. Um, clergy is required to, to do the liturgy of the hours, especially the morning and evening prayers for sure. But it's an awareness of our, of our relationship with God. So there were types of prayer. And then there's like different forms of prayer, like uh, a blessing and adoration, um, man's response to God's gift. When are you the happiest? I don't know if you thought about your day and uh, when you feel really close to God, and maybe when you feel a little further away from God. Um, for some reason, I always feel close to God around the noon hour. I don't know if that's just because I I'm going to get a bite to eat or I finished or what, but uh, uh, it just seems, um, I think it was a practice that I've, I've had for a long time where, you know, when I was coaching, uh, the day is so full, you like to have just a little bit of time for yourself, and I would like to get alone, whether it was right at my office and close the door, or even if I was home, to go to the bedroom or the easy chair or something like that. And so I don't forget about it. Uh, I want to tell you something that uh, I'm, I'm sure was recommended to me, but um, I like to, uh, Caroline, my wife, calls it my cell. I have an easy chair, and... Uh, I like to sit there and in the morning uh, light a candle, or if I don't feel like I have time to light a candle, I do a, uh, a lamp, light a lamp, and uh, a light to guide us. And then I have a crucifix, and I look at that crucifix, and, and it, it, it shows us God's love for us and uh, what he did. And then the presence, it's so nice that we have adoration so much here at St. Thomas. The other, or, or if I'm not at adoration, if I'm in my house, you know, I can look at the Bible, the, God's presence in the Bible, in the Word. And so a, a light to guide us, a God's love for us, and God's presence among us. And so it's a good way to start the day. It might be only two minutes. It might be five minutes. It depends on your schedule. But uh, you might do a little reading. You might do a reflection, you know, right there that, that, that has you more open to God. So I think those are, uh, those are, are, are good, good practices. Um, uh, we talked about prayer of petition, uh, prayer of intercession. Um, um, we pray for the intercession of someone. We ask them, uh, will you pray for me? praying to God for you. Um, I know that when we get a, a notice or somebody's having a hard time, we can write their name down, we can reflect on that, and we can pray for them. And the Lord hears our prayer. Um, Saint Pio, Padre Pio, uh, says, pray and don't worry, and pray with your lips, but even pray with your heart. And so, you sit there and, uh, and you see the presence of God and you pray with your heart uh, and, and it's very, God hears your prayers. A prayer of thanksgiving uh, and praise, recognizing that God is God. And um, you know, the supplication is like everything, beseech, uh, plead, cry, um, beg, ask, whatever it might be. Um, we pray to the saints to intercede for us. And like today, the uh, uh, saint of, uh, of uh, memorial of, of St. Patrick. And then the uh, methods of prayer. Um, John Paul II says, um, um, be simple, pray like a child with trust. And he talked about uh, the expressions of prayer and really emphasized uh, meditating on the Our Father, 
which we just talked about a few minutes ago, the, the uh, petitions of the Our Father, um, you know, and breaking it down to thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And so each one of those segments is a petition that we can concentrate on. And uh, a good way of doing that is using the prayer of Lexio Divina. It's one of the spirituality prayers, and uh, we'll cover that in just, in just a minute. Um, there's meditative prayer. The mind seeks to know the why and how of Christian life and what is uh, the Lord asking. You know, it's kind of, you're there. The car is being driven, but you're there. And so you're in the presence of God. Um, the sources, you know, of, of, of what we just talked about. Contemplative prayer is, um, it must be worked on for a long time. It is a gift, it's a grace. Um, can be accepted only in humility and poverty. Relax, allow God to come to you. And this is like uh, that Lexio Divina. It's a powerful method. There's four steps. It's to read it slowly, meditate, pray, and contemplate. Read, reflect, respond, and rest. And you can put it to the metaphor of food, like read slowly, taste the food, meditate, chew, pray, swallow, contemplate, you are full and you feel that. So, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a way of, uh, of uh, say, breaking up the Our Father and you say, give us this day our daily bread and then you use the Lexio Divina on that and you really spend time on that, you meditate on that. I know from my own experience, um, the more you pray, the more you want to pray, the more you will be there. And uh, uh, it's just a, a wonderful feeling. You actually feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, right now, during Lent, we talk about the pillars of Lent, like uh, alms giving, prayer, and fasting. Um, prayer and fasting and almsgiving, when you help someone else, or I mean, a charity, when you help someone else, I mean, that, that, that's great also, that's very important. But, but the, um, the fasting and prayer, if you, if you fast, I know Father uh, fasted on, on uh, Ash Wednesday, and I mean, even a fast of, of bread and water, where you do have some sustenance for your body, but, but not much, and so you really fast, you have a feeling, you have a consolation in your body. It might be four o'clock in the afternoon, but you get that consolation. I am almost embarrassed to say, I haven't had that consolation very much because I haven't really fasted the way I should. I'm trying to fast on Wednesdays and Fridays, and I stand here before you telling you I haven't done a very good job. Um, but doesn't mean that we can't start again and the next day do that. You know, and so it's kind of our, 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 our life and what we want to devote to and what we want to concentrate on and what we, what we want to do. So this, uh, this contemplative prayer, it almost reminds me also, I've got a a book called Day by Day. It's called The Catholic Heart by Richard Beyer. And for today, there's a reading each day, and they're wonderful, and they're, they're all over the place. The soldier um, 200 years ago, um, you know, today, presently. But today it was the prayer of quiet. And when I looked at that today, I thought, you know, talking about prayer tonight, this is pretty neat. And so the prayer of quiet 
May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Psalm 141, verses 1 and 2. The highest form of prayer is beyond words, found in the silence that is God's first language. The prayer of quiet or centering prayer in which we experience God in the very depths of our being is not difficult, but takes perseverance. The following guidelines will help you. Choose a place where you can be alone without distraction. Take a comfortable bodily position, close your eyes, and put everything out of your mind. Another point, physically relax and let all tensions leave you. Deep, deliberate breathing will help this process. Another point, center all your attention on God and let a word or phrase form in your consciousness. Suggestions might be Jesus, Mary, Joseph, or peace, or Jesus, I trust in you, whatever comes to your mind like that. And that kind of brings you back if you start to uh, wander away. Another point, 20 minutes twice a day, morning and evening, will, ag- will allow God to deeply penetrate your soul and begin the healing and transformation. You might not do that all at once at the beginning, but you may work up to that. And uh, uh, honestly and personally, I have found that to be true. Your prayer, prayer should end slowly and quietly, perhaps with a slow recitation of the Our Father and concentrate on the Our Father. And we had just talked about those petitions. St. Uh, John Paul II uh, recommended that. And so, um, you know, we wish you, you know, peace in, in helping your prayer life. So I thought that was... Uh, that was pretty interesting as far as uh, uh, following our, our prayer time. You know, and you have to develop uh, our prayer times. You know, there can be difficulties, and I think we kind of referenced that. Uh, uh, the difficulties in praying uh, would be like um, electronics, you know, social media, your phone, um, whatever it might be, um, priorities that you have, um, technical things that you either ignore or that that you pay attention to. Um, A quiet time, you know, wherever that works for you. For some people, that's in the morning. Most people, I think it's in the morning. They feel like uh, this gets their day off to a good start. And so they use that time in the morning. Others maybe at noon or maybe even in the evening, depending on the size of the family or what, the, what, what you're involved with, and so, so that's something. So, so anyway, um, according to your routine, the grace will be given to you. Um, you know, and you might say, what are our reasons for prayer? Well, the teachings of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount that we talked about, and, um, you know, because our hearts are restless, the personal benefits that we get, and uh, f- and from us, I mean, I, I think each person uh, there is a desire, and that and that desire uh, makes the effort, produces the effort that that we need uh, to have a good prayer life. Uh, the different types of um, uh, spirituality personalities are are tested also which is kind of interesting. You might have done that at a retreat or in a class or something like that, but there's the uh, Ignatian uh, um, spirituality, and the examine is like um, part of Ignatian spirituality, but there are steps in the examine, like uh, 
awareness, a gratitude awareness, a magnificence of God, um, respond, reflect, renew, you know, diff diff different things like that and the, the categories. And you can look that up in the exam and, and uh, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a good routine. It's a good thing to follow. I mean, it, it kind of it kind of gets you on that prayer process that that you want to follow, and so uh, that that was that's always good. Um, Thomistic uh, spirituality is more intuitive. Saint Thomas um, um, uh, more inner uh, feelings and so forth. Um, Franciscan uh, spirituality is more um, see, smell, touch, and hear. You know, it's just like um, uh, personalities of people. Uh, you know, some people learn by hearing. Other people learn by touch. And so whatever prayer uh, spirituality affects you the most that's what you probably need to use and that's what you will go uh for that will what you will lean to i remember having a player one time and uh i didn't realize it at the time but i but 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 i i realized it later uh he learned by feel and um uh, and it was one of his psychology classes that that, that i learned that in talking to his professor and and he was he he would always uh, uh, touch you on your shoulder, or uh, he came real close to you when when he talked to you. Um, there were just different things like that. That see, smell, touch. That's more uh, Franciscan. Um, the Augustinian is. Uh, kind of like you can imagine what that is, the more of the imagination, uh, quiet, you know, meditation and so forth. And then um, the Benedictine, the rules of, uh, of St. Benedict, I think the Lexio Divina comes out of that uh, uh, spirituality. But I mean, you can, you can kind of cross over from one to the other or you can try them, but uh, it might be good to uh, to to look up, and uh, and you know today on our phones with Google, you can find anything, uh, you know, instantly. And so uh, I go to a Bible study on on Friday mornings, and uh, it's a real cross section of people, some wonderful people. There's only about two or three of us that are Catholic. There's anywhere from seven to fifteen people go, but. Uh, uh, the 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 spirituality is there and the love of god the love of christ the love of jesus is is there and so uh, um it's it's very uh, it's very formative and and uh, and and you, you kind of pick up things from from others as far as their style and so forth with um uh, with so many people here um i didn't i didn't know if there was any questions or or comments before we go to Mary. So. I, yes. Uh, What's your uh, favorite uh, method of prayer? What have you found that you use? What is uh, my favorite method of prayer? What have I found? Um, I've really gotten into adoration, where I love adoration, and and uh, I'm just fortunate that I have the time and thankful for the blessings of being able to uh, be in adoration, adoring the Lord uh, for at least an hour every day. And uh, uh, I think uh, the, uh, uh, I lean back toward the formula a little bit, even though there might not be a formula. I like to make sure that I've done the uh, the, the chaplet. I, I want to make sure maybe that I've got the rosary in. And so that's kind of, you know, but sometimes uh, 
I try to pray just with my heart because I know Padre Pio said that. And so I found that um, really nice sometimes, just to relax and just to be, have the quiet time and, and be with the Lord, you know. And uh, um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I would say uh, just knowing my personality, I'm more into the uh, uh, Franciscan, I would say, type of prayer. But uh, thank you. Um, you know, on, um, on Mary, talking about Mary, um, our Blessed Mother, um, I think we should all be consecrated to our Blessed Mother. And that is where you want to please her, you want to be with her, you want to be, you want to do the right thing, you want to be close to her, you pray for her intercession. And um, um, we honor her. And so, so this is really, this is really um, um, a good subject in that a lot of people and a lot of non-Catholics don't see and understand, you know, maybe our, uh, our, our devotion to Mary. And yet, once you start praying the rosary and, and our Blessed Mother will intercede for us. And so um, I just wanted to mention a little bit about the history of the rosary. You know, we go back so long and uh, it's basically uh, been around for over 1,200 years and it's a meditation on the life of Christ, the mysteries of Christ. And so it dates way back, and the Irish monks used to recite and chant 150 psalms of the Bible as the major uh, part of their worship. And so this is where it began, and it, was, um, uh, it became popular. People started to devise methods in order to keep track of their prayers. Um, at first, little pebbles were used placed inside small leather pouches. Um, then their rope was tied into knots to keep track, and the strings got smaller. In later years, the Irish monks traveled throughout Europe and brought this devotion with them. In some areas, both clergy and lay people began to recite the angelic salutation, which is uh, basically the first part of what we say, the Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Um, and so during the 13th century, medieval theologians began to interpret um, more uh, of the Psalms as the veiled mysteries of Christ. And so talked about his life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And so the rosary today honors both our Blessed Mother and our Lord uh, Jesus. The rosary is really a meditation on the gospel. Uh, we, we pray for Mary's intercession to go to Jesus in, in, in the rosary. So it's uh, uh, the consecration to our Blessed Mother. Uh, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Um, her saying yes the Magnificat, the ascent of, uh, of, 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 of saying yes to, to, to God. Um, our mother Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, um, you know, having Jesus the second, the second person of the Holy Trinity. And um, it, it, our closeness to our Blessed Mother brings us closer to Jesus. And I think that's the whole objective and the whole uh, reason for our, our uh, uh, honoring Mary the way we do. Um, I just made a note here that we can do our, our, our spiritual time um, 
talking to the Blessed Mother, asking for her intercession. And so, you know, when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, hail full of grace, uh, that says it all right there to be able to be able to conceive through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the perfect being and conceived without sin is just uh, uh, the only one. And so our Lord is perfect and so is our Blessed Mother. And that would be um, our, uh, uh, the Theotokos, you know, uh, in, the, in, in the Gospels talking about that, of Mary being the mother of God. And so um, there, there is so much there as far as um, our readings are concerned and, and uh, uh, ways that uh, 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 the Marian uh, devotions and uh, uh, the, the various orders of uh, religious that have devoted their lives to our Blessed Mother so I mean, uh, there's a lot out there that that we can uh, uh, grab onto as far as our prayer life, or as far as uh, uh, following uh, f and following a retreat through that. And uh, so uh, it's just a, it's just a, a a wonderful part of our life that that helps us along in our daily challenges and, and struggles. You know, I. I think, um, um, I, I can't remember right now, maybe Father knows where it says in the Bible, you know, uh, uh, we blossom in the morning and we wilt in the evening, we're like a flower, and uh, we live until we're 70 years old or 80 for those who are strong, and most of these are filled with pain and anxiety and uh, heartbreak. And I mean, when we look around us, we look at the year we just uh, finished in COVID and hopefully we finished, hopefully we're on the upside. It was a little disheartening this morning reading about the variant and how there's cases rising in different parts of the world and even in our country. And so, but, but everything that we see, uh, uh, I think reflects should open our eyes to really what's it all about. And for me, I have always, uh, I, I think honestly, uh, that's probably why I've been blessed to be a deacon, is all, uh, for some reason, all my life, I always looked at priests and as uh, what they've done with their life and how they've given their life to the Lord to live for others and how they help and what they do. And we don't have any idea a lot of times what they go through on a daily basis, um, whether it's hospital visits, whether it's, uh, you know, the shepherding, the, the church, uh, the congregation, the, you know, there's so much. But uh, 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 really on the right path. I think when, when, uh, when, when the end of their lives come, for the most part, it's thank you, Jesus. You know, and so anyway, it was great. Um, spending this time with you and uh, um, let's close with a prayer. Jesus, thank you for our time together tonight, for the blessings that, that we have. We pray for the intercession of our Blessed Mother. We pray for all of those that are on this live stream tonight, for all the people that are discerning the Catholic Church, the church founded by Jesus himself, and for the salvation of all souls. In Christ's name, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you.
Uh, thank you uh, for the questions. And, uh, you know, for one question on uh, why and what to do when you're distracted easily, um, you know, you, you try to regroup, you try to uh, think of a, a quiet time, you take a deep breath, you get your mind back to Jesus in your prayer life by saying, um, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. It's where, you know, you're, you're, you're concentrating back to the mind that you had before you got distracted. Um, the distraction also, being in a quiet place and being by yourself can avoid a lot of distractions where there's not noise in another room. There's not a TV going on that you hear you know, that, that would distract you and so forth. So I would just say, you know, your quiet time and just try to reflect back on, on your prayer life. Thank you.